Yeah, good morning, guys. Remember around 5 a.m. we did a balloon launch, right? So I want to show you it's almost done, right? So we still have all that data coming in. That's the line of temperature. That's the line of dew point. It's a pretty dry air mass. Those are the wind speeds as well. But if you look, it moved east, right? It doesn't fly up straight up in a point, right? It Because the atmosphere has winds. And Jean here, who uh, did that balloon launch this morning, has been tracking it. What have you found? Where is it gone? Well, um, the winds aloft are moving at about 160 knots, which is about 185 miles an hour to the east. Uh, because that balloon got into that jet stream, it actually moved from Springfield almost all the way to Cape Girardeau at this point. That's crazy. So if we had a flight going east this morning, you're getting a big uh, boost from the jet stream this morning. You are. You might arrive a little bit early. Yep. Guys, look at all this cool stuff we're doing for you this morning at the National Weather Service. Thank you. So, yeah, our balloon data pretty much done. Um, we are also checking your weather forecast for you this morning. As you head out, it is a little bit chillier. Temperature is about 10 to 15 degrees cooler. It's 37 degrees in Springfield right now and 41 degrees in Branson. Um, by dismissal, we're looking at some pretty mild temperatures at 62 degrees with sunshine. Uh, we're looking at some mostly sunny skies today. Again, temperatures in the lower 60s. Um, things pretty Pretty mild out there, and then we'll have some clearing skies tonight. And by tomorrow, a couple of more clouds fill in from the south, uh, but we'll still keep temperatures mild and things pretty dry. Still not a bad day, just a little bit more in the way of filtered sunshine. And then temperatures will be a little bit cooler by Friday, but we keep things pretty quiet uh, through the seven day next rain chances and until Sunday. Again, we've been here live at the National Weather Service all morning. Remember that statewide tornado drill is at uh, 10 a.m., okay? So you'll have sunshine. Time, but you'll hear the sirens. That's your cue to practice your tornado safety plan. And again, a huge thanks to the Weather Service Office. They've actually been helping surrounding offices with that damage that's near Paducah and Nashville this morning. So thank you to them for letting me crash the party. Joe, Lauren. All right, thank you, Elisa. We continue our talk about Severe Weather Awareness Week with your education coverage. Always important to be prepared to find the most secure shelters available no matter where you are. Color 10's Nigel McDonald visited Nixa Public Schools and joins us this morning to lay out the district's severe weather plan. Nigel. Well, good morning, Lauren and Joe. Nixa Public Schools has four FEMA safe rooms that can house between 7,000 and 8,000 people from the community. Now, Zach Rance of Nixa Public Schools says the Joplin tornado really changed the way the district looks at severe weather readiness. Rance says this included updating the district's tornado drills. He says the FEMA safe rooms are open as soon as a tornado watch is issued and remain opened until the watch or warning is over. Rance says it's important to bring food, water, and any medications with you. He says to also plan on being there for at least several hours. We've had those tornado watches and warnings that have gone, you know, eight to 12 hours. Um, we've had some that are really short. So they seem to plan ahead uh, to make sure they have all the stuff that they need um, because we plan, uh, provide a safe place for them to go. We don't provide all the other stuff with the supplies. Well, I also reached out to Springfield Public Schools for its severe weather plan. District officials say each school has a crisis response plan specific to its campus. They say SBS also coordinates with the National Weather Service. If a watch or warning are issued, school leaders will implement their response procedures. Nigel McDonald reporting that information is very important because many safe rooms were used overnight in Nashville while violent storms tore through the area. Authorities have confirmed at least nine deaths, but the mayor is now saying they're going to quit updating that number until they can survey the area a little bit better because there is so much devastation. According to the Nashville Fire Department, crews are responding to about 40 structure collapses around the city. Authorities have also deployed search and rescue teams to neighborhoods. The federal government is trying to set up more federal funding to fight the coronavirus. Drury political science professor Dr. Dan Ponder tells us how the virus could become a major campaign issue heading into November. He believes people from both parties have already, already have opinions on how COVID-19 is being handled by the U.S. Some Democrats say the president has put the nation in a vulnerable state by getting rid of Obama-era positions dedicated to fight infectious diseases. And Republicans say the Democrats are making it a bigger deal than it is and that the situation is being monitored. If it spreads, I think um, it's going to definitely be a big part of, of the rhetoric in the election. If it does spread, and it depends on what the administration tries to do, I think obviously you're going to see Democratic candidates make the case 
that not only was the country not prepared for this, but actions by President Trump in the last few years actively made us uh, much more vulnerable. If they're able to contain it, um, my guess is that'll be a much more, obviously that'll be a much more uh, advantage to the Trump side. Now, Dr. Ponder also says the virus could eventually impact the budget and reallocation of money and where it'll go, depending on if the virus spreads more and how serious it gets. Also happening around the Ozarks, it's a field that's been predominantly uh, predominantly men. It's construction and it's slowly seeing a growth in the number of women employees. The city of Springfield even proclaimed this week as Women in Construction Week. Many women who attended that proclamation have been in construction for a while now and they say they're specifically seeing more women in leadership roles. That can be positions like operations manager, branch manager, or even superintendent. They are also seeing more women working out in the field though too. One a member of our group, she's at in roofing. So I mean, she's not afraid to get up there and start swinging the hammer on top of the roof. Even those people that may be thinking, you know, well, I sit behind a desk, they can still move out and sometimes make more money doing the trades. Working in concrete or drywall. And so, you know, it's not just a man's field. Another local development, too, in the construction field, OTC Center for Workforce Development, as well as the general contractor Branco Enterprises, are now partnering to give instruction for their carpentry apprenticeship program based here in Springfield. And as part of their work week, Branco's apprentices will be taught at OTC for a few hours every week. And some more local news. Police in Springfield are still investigating a suspicious death in the 3600 block of South Fort. That's just south of Hy-Vee in a neighborhood past Walnut Lawn. All, all we know as of now is that a woman has died. We're still working, though, to find out the details, and we'll update you as soon as we get them. A two-vehicle crash in Phelps County has also killed one person. The Highway Patrol crash report indicates 61-year-old Charles Faulkner was attempting to make a U-turn on Highway 63. While turning, his vehicle was hit by a second one, killing Faulkner. The driver and the passenger of the second vehicle were taken to the hospital with moderate injuries. New this morning, the city of Springfield is looking for your input on several upcoming enhancement projects for Commercial Street. An open house will be tonight from 5 to 6.30 at Drury on C Street. The current projects include pedestrian alleyways and a public parking lot. Everyone attending will be able to view final designs for the projects and give their thoughts. Let's take a look now at what's coming up after daybreak. Hello to you, I'm Gail King. Coming right up, should you consider changing your travel plans due to the spread of the coronavirus? We're talking about that. That's coming right up on CBS This Morning. And of course, some big trends happening right now. Um, the breaking news that's been happening out of Nashville overnight, mm -hmm. just constant news updates about the tornado that came through that area. Yeah, at least two we know have touched down very early this morning in central Tennessee, mm -hmm. including one that ripped across downtown Nashville. About 40 buildings collapsed and Really interesting word, too, from the mayor this morning, right? The Associated Press is reporting the Nashville mayor and area sheriffs are confirming an unspecified number of deaths after those tornadoes have taken down buildings. At least 40 structures have collapsed in Nashville alone one of the bigger cities in our country, too. Now, the second trend we'll get to in just a second is Super Tuesday, a huge day in politics ahead of the presidential election in November. Mm -hmm. But Tennessee is a Super Tuesday state, and some schools there have already announced that though they will be closed because of the damage. Right. Voting will be kept closed, and as well as the schools for another week while they handle those repairs. And it's going to be a lot to deal with, and curious to see how Tennessee is handling that. Right? I know. It really makes your stomach hurt to hear the sheriffs there locally saying, we we're just going to stop giving you an update on the death toll. Mm -hmm. It makes you, you know, worried about what that number will be. But of course, we'll keep you updated in the next following days and tonight as we learn some more information. Certainly. Super Tuesday is, though, underway. Mm -hmm. Those polls opening 14 states up for grabs right now for the uh, Democratic nomination here, right? Arkansas, just to our south, is one of them. It's mm -hmm. considered the most important day in the presidential campaign so far. So Joe Biden heads into the day coming off a big weekend win, South Carolina. 
Several candidates have dropped out since then. A lot of endorsements coming his way, right? Yeah, so Amy Klobuchar is now out, Tom Steyer's out, Pete Buttigieg, and pretty much all of them are now endorsing Joe Biden. Yes, they've all endorsed him, as has Beto O'Rourke, who mm -hmm. had a lot of heat early on in that race. There was also a question of some people that have cast early ballots. Okay. What will happen if they voted for those candidates that have yeah. dropped out? And in most all states, that vote still goes to them. They're still on the ballots, even though we've had several people drop out the last few days. Okay. Okay, and as a reminder, Senator Bernie Sanders starts Super Tuesday with the lead in delegates mm -hmm. uh, just ahead of Biden. So it'll be interesting to see if these endorsements change that. Of course, the updates are always on OzarksFirst.com coming then. We've also got the seven day. You want to do some weather? <laughs> I do. I, you know, I could just stand here for the seven day because I feel like it's all <laughs> yellow sunshine and I love it. It's so nice and 60. So look at that, guys. 62 today, mild sunshine. Fantastic. Thanks for starting your morning off with Daybreak, everyone.